Hello, and welcome to this new portrait practice video. And um, this particular video is going to be much, much different from the other ones because instead of doing a portrait practice by grabbing a, a portrait from the internet and trying to copy that, we are instead going to practice on the planes of the head. So yes, we are going back to the basics and so the planes of the head is pretty much kind of the first thing that you learn in art school. The planes of the head is a good way to sort of break everything down into simpler forms and yeah it also shows the different kind of plane changes that happen on the face. So that's what I did. Anyway, what you're seeing right now in the background is just me doing some warm-up sketches and I'm doing that using um, using Line of Action which is some, an online resource where you could draw you could get references of different things like faces, hands, landscapes, animals and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, you're not going to be able to see that. I'm just doing some quick warm up sketches from using those um, uh, references. Anyway, uh, before starting this video, I pretty much just collected some planes of the planes of the head slash skull references out of the internet and put them into Clip Studio Paint. And yes, I'm not using Krita. I'm not using Photoshop for this one. I'm using Clip Studio Paint and I kind of got this uh, software recently. And so, yeah, this is quite a special video for that. That's why I wanted to uh, simplify things for myself. Because not only am I for, I guess, trying to go back to the basics, but also trying I'm trying to learn a new new program, a new art program in order to do this. And so um, simplicity is required for this one. Yeah. So you'll see me first sketch out the basic uh, construction work of the, uh, the forms of this piece of the head in pencil. And I'm just using the one of the default pencil brushes Urban Clip Studio Paint because like I'm not really I'm still not familiar with the program and of course when I get more familiar with it I'll probably start making my own brushes and try to and you know, try to try to tweak some stuff but uh, the most part um, the brush does seem quite like a pencil so for my drawing tablet right now the one I'm using to draw these planes of the head is the Wacom Intuos Pen Touch Small. Uh, no, not Pen and Touch Small, just the Pen and Tablet Small, sorry. Um, and it feels fine. It feels good. Um, the Pen and Tablet comes with the software Clip Studio, Clip Studio Paint. That's why uh, I have Clip Studio Paint and I'm using it right now. Um, first of all, <laughs> when I was drawing this um, with the pencil brush, it didn't feel like I had any control over the pet over the pressure so it's like when it when I put down a line it's a full-on solid line which is quite uh, shocking to me and so I had to draw very very carefully and cleanly and not loosely which I, I I usually draw very loosely in order to like really figure out the proportions of stuff but here it wasn't an it wasn't an option. I had to like very, I had to be very, very critical on the angles and the amount of lines that I need to put down. Well, for the first painting, we actually missed that because I was doing the painting, then I forgot to actually record the damn thing, and so I decided to turn on finally the recording software and do the painting, well, do the second um, second skull painting thing. <laughs> okay, I'm messing up so bad, but anyway. Um, so I kind of just um, lowered the opacity of the, uh, of the sketch construction line on another layer and added in another layer in order to do the painting. So 
Um, in terms of the brushes that I used, um, the ones that I use are the round mixer brush and a few of the gouache brushes. I didn't download any uh, brushes online or make my own brushes here. I just wanted to use the default brushes that's, that is provided by um, Clip Studio Paint to see if I like them or not and if they actually feel good. Um, and also if like if these brushes are quite, um, how do you say this, um, user friendly. Like once you use them, it's easy to pick up. And for the most part, um, yes, um, they are easy to pick up and you kind of figure out how they feel after like maybe two minutes of using them. Um, same issue with um, during my construction phases. Um, virtually no pressure. <laughs> like I couldn't feel any uh, any substance of, uh, of pen pressure on these brushes or maybe that's just how these brushes were programmed but like in terms of how I had to use them I had to like treat like each painting like I'm actually using uh, physical paint where I have to um, put down paint semi opaquely or just opaque so I wasn't I wasn't relying on pen pressure to add in add in um, some subtle uh, value or color or any of that. I was just using the color wheel on the bottom left, just um, yeah, mucking around over there and trying to get the right color and value in. Yeah. So for the process, um, for the most part, I was like, I was just putting down a sort of um, light wash, something that just gets rid of the, the white of the paper and also to add a little bit of um, color variation and um, value to the painting before you even start. So, so because if you do that, you get a, a good amount of, um, how do you say this? Um, uh, good amount of color, <laughs> color variation and uh, color uh, or, and value into the painting that you're doing um, early on, and yeah, and it kind of adds a little bit of flair into the uh, painting slash study that you're doing, especially when you're looking at uh, I guess realism or the explor exploration of um, different styles. Um, especially like, I guess, if you look at the latest movies, uh, animated movies, it's all about, you know, th this um, crazy usage of color. And yeah, I kind of am into those kind of things and I just wanted to get into that. But I'm not really a guy that is well versed in the color theory stuff, but I am working on it. So I started with a relatively light value and then went slowly uh, worked my way down to the value scale from um, relatively light to slightly slightly darker mid slightly darker upper mid turn then to the mid turns then you the general um, dark values the shadow values and all that and then back to the highlights and after that it's just messing around with um, um, the different subtle uh, value changes in within the um, the planes of the skull slash head. Also, 
I actually didn't mean to do this, but I'm actually glad that I actually、um, did the、uh, planes of the skull for this kind of particular video because I'm not well versed in, in color. I already said that, but I'm actually, I just don't understand it. But this,、um, this session with、um, studying the planes of the head slash planes of the skull, it actually.、Um, Uh, provided me like an opportunity to learn about color because here there's not much in it, but it's very subtle,、um, very subtle shifts in gray. So even though there's it's mostly gray, there, there's, there's a bit of a hint of color, and like、um, you can really see from just that subtleness um, um, all the、um, bounce and like how. You really, really figure out like, how light works and how it just bounces from bounces color from one object to the other. And it's really great. Especially like, this particular skull, which has like, a, blue, a blue background and blue、uh, table, but it has this really warm lighting coming from the light that is shining onto it. And it's really it's a good,、um, good way to learn about, you know. Color theory, the warm colors and the cool colors, and、um, the context of using them within a particular piece is, is really good.、Um, yeah. Also,、um, besides you know, valuing usage of color, you also learn about,、um, I also learned about、um, using shape. So、um, I think. I think I heard this somewhere. I think it was Marco Bucci's video that, you know, value in color、um, can be seen as just,、um, just shapes, pretty much. And if you, if you just break them down to just simple shapes, you can pretty much figure, like, you can pretty much really figure out how the, you know, the different plane changes and all that. And, That's, that's actually like a good way to break things down. Like the shadow, all the, your shadow values are just one big shape. If you just squint your eyes, you could like, and like, you know, blur everything out. It's just one big shape. Like you can group things into light values, mid turns, and, and dark values by doing that. Just thinking of them as just one solid shape. And from there, after you break them down, you can just. Subtly、um, adjust each value and color from there. And so,、um, so even though like, you're just adjusting them, they're still within t h a t families of lights and darks and warms and cools, of course. So,、uh, for most of this painting, I was starting from like painting from light down to dark, as you would, actually, I wish, as you would、um, generally in traditional media. But I also wanted to try a sort of、um, um, a bolder approach, basically starting from a mid turn into a general dark value. And I was not used to doing that. And At all, actually. I, I do actually do that in one of these paintings. It's one of the skulls. And、uh, I failed so hard in the beginning. 
so I had to like get a get a get a uh, like a spray brush and just paint everything in, in a lighter gray just do it all over again but in from a light to dark process and I don't know I think I have to practice on that because like going uh, using a sort of um, mid-tone and general dark value actually breaks the painting is enough for you to um, describe the picture but I'm not used to doing that um, I think it's in it's also in like one video of Marco Bucci I'll try to reference that in the description of the video so um, in terms of um, using references it is quite useful especially when you're doing um, studies and how values, light, you know, and how, you know, how that responds to different forms and, you know, plane changes and all that. But I guess sometimes when you're nearing, like, when you're trying to tie everything down, it's kind of like you're, I feel like I'm locked in into the references and then I, and I can't deviate from that. And I think, I think I learned this from someone. I think it was Brian Lee, my it was my uh, figure drawing instructor. So basically, if you have everything down, like the construction and the general lights and the values, you don't have to look at your at references anymore you, because you already have that general idea. And then, then you, after that, you just stop looking at the reference and just do it on your own. And from there, you could add your own flair into it, add different kinds of, of course, still within um, uh, lights and docks and the uh, colors that you're using. But yeah, I think, I think I might try doing that after I get a particular, after I get the general sense of the picture, I'll just stop using the references and just continue painting. And uh, I want to see, uh, and I now want to see what the result of that is. Okay, so a small little tidbit. Instead of um, you know putting like the light values, darker values, and all that stuff in like different layers, I actually just painted everything in one layer. Uh, and I guess that felt more natural. It gave it gave the painting process a more of a traditional feel. But that's not how you do it. Uh, usually, digitally, because like in digital, you have layers. Um, and layer styles and all that stuff, bending modes. Um, I just wanted to do it just to, like, pretty much just learn, to have good um, instincts in value and color and shapes. But in general, do not do this in one layer. Do it in multiple layers.
to make this video. It actually took um, multiple days in order to record each painting. So each painting is about probably 20 minutes to an hour, depending on how much time I actually spent, that, spent on them. And I did that across multiple days. And, at, and it's at this point, as I'm editing, that the video is getting too long now. And I still haven't gone through the skull, skull stuff. So I'm gonna save that for another part. So this is just part one. So look forward to part two next time. So see you there.